Hey, what's going on everyone? Today we're gonna to be talking about the Ecobee 5 or also known as the Smart Thermostat. So stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. Believe it or not, as long as I've been running this smart home channel, I don't have a smart thermostat. So this is actually the first smart thermostat that I've ever purchased. In fact, I was trying to decide between the Ecobee and getting the Nest thermostat. Since I have two thermostats in my house, one upstairs, one downstairs, I actually bought both. In this video, we're just gonna be talking about Ecobee, but later down the road, I will be doing a review on the Nest thermostat, so stay tuned for that. And before we get started, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos like this one. Also, I'll have affiliate links in the description below with up-to-date pricing, so check those out. All right, so in this box, we have the smart thermostat and sensor. Underneath that, we have the power extender kit. If you don't have a C-wire in your thermostat, you can use this to get power to the thermostat. We also have the back plate, a stand for the sensors, a bag with screws and wall anchors, and then inside the sleeve comes the larger trim plate if you need to cover up any old screw holes in your wall. So a couple of key features with this thermostat is that it comes with Alexa built into it, and it also has a brand new quad-core processor. I noticed going through the menu options, it was very responsive and quick jumping through everything, so you definitely noticed that updated processor. So having Amazon built into this device is not new. It's actually on the Ecobee 4 model, but in this version, it is much improved. It's got much better speakers. I was actually really surprised on how well the speakers were when I first got it all set up. They've also incorporated a few new functionalities with this too. So now you can make calls. You can do the drop-in feature, which is kind of like an intercom system. You can use this for messaging and you can also play music from it too. By default, when you request music, it plays through Amazon Music, but you can sync up your Spotify account with this device. Tapping on the mic on screen allows you to adjust the volume turn the mic on and off, and it also gives you the push to talk feature. So if you don't want to be calling out the wake word each time, you can tap this button to give it any commands. Also, you are not able to change the wake word, so it's always going to be Alexa. Okay, so setting up the hardware is super easy to do. I just followed the instructions that the manual gave it, but if you guys want a video on how to do the install, Ecobee, has their own install video on YouTube. I will link it up in the top right corner for you guys to check out. Now that we have all the hardware installed and we look at the front of this thing, the app looks exactly the same as the thermostat. So let's jump into the app and we'll go through the settings. All right, now here we have the main menu. The first thing that I would recommend doing here in the main menu is setting your comfort settings. So we've got three default settings here. This is going to be what you like it at when you're home anywhere in between that range. This is gonna be when you're away, and then we also have at night when you're sleeping. You can add more by clicking on the plus button up here, creating another custom one if you want to, but that is how you do comfort settings. So if we back out of here, the next thing I would recommend is going to schedule. So in the schedule here is what you're going to do to set up your daily schedule. I added a few more things here than what the default was, what I added here was the away. So essentially what this is saying is that we're sleeping from essentially midnight to 7 a.m. At 7 a.m., put the temperature to 70 degrees in the morning or down to 78 if it's hot outside. And then we leave the house by 7.30, so go into away mode. We're typically home from work about 4 p.m., so set it back to my home mode and then keep it there until we go to bed at 10.30. Now, one thing to keep in mind that's a little bit different from the old thermostat that I had is that if I were to say, set this 7 a.m. temperature, say home 7 a.m., set my thermostat to 70 degrees in the morning, raise up the temperature. In my old thermostat at 7 a.m., it would turn on and start warming up the house. With this smart thermostat, what's a little different is that at 7 a.m., it will have the temperature at 70 degrees. So as time goes on and it learns how long it takes to heat up your house, it will adjust and start warming up in the morning however much it needs to. If it detects that it takes an hour to bring it up 
five degrees, 10 degrees, whatever that is, it will start that early. If it's 30 minutes, whatever it is, it will start warming up the house and have it ready for you at 70 degrees by 7 a.m. So keep that in mind. So now if we back out of here, the next thing we can look at are sensors. So a couple different options that we have here in sensors, smart home in a way is enabled. There are two sensors. There's a sensor on the actual thermostat itself, and that is a motion sensor or an occupancy sensor. And then there's also one on the, the little standalone sensor that it comes with. By having this enabled right here, if your home is set in say away mode and you come home and pass by or in or in range of one of those sensors picking you up it's going to know that somebody's home and when that happens it's going to switch it from away mode back to home mode because somebody is occupying that area now that's a cool feature if you have somebody coming over to the house uh, let's say my parents are going to come over and watch the kids that day Typically, everything would just be shut off, all the AC, they don't know how to use this stuff. But if these sensors pick up that somebody came home, it is automatically going to switch it to home mode and change it to our comfort settings for home mode. And you can also turn on what's called follow me. So say you have one of these sensors in every single room. You're not upstairs anymore, you're in the downstairs area, and you are just in that area, it is going to take the temperature from that sensor and keep that temperature sensor in mind when it's adjusting your comfort settings. So if it's really hot upstairs and cold downstairs, but you want it to be cold and you're downstairs, it's going to use the temperature off of that sensor, not the ones upstairs that show no activity. So that's a cool thing with follow mode. Okay, so if we back out of this, we're gonna go down to thermostat preferences. So this is where you can set some preferences that I personally really like. Um, not only can you name your device, set your temperature display, but here, the heating and cooling range. You can set your ranges, whatever you want them to be, to not go over or under specified ranges. So for me, for heating, I went in here and I adjusted mine that I don't want my heater to ever go above 76 degrees. I'm here in California, we don't have a huge range in temperature. So for me personally, I never want my heater really over 74. So because of that, I set mine to never go over 76. That way if somebody's in here playing with it, um, now it's too high really for the kids, but let's say they get older, they pull a chair over and they're playing with it. Oh, I can change numbers and they accidentally, let's see how high I can go and they put it to 90 degrees and you're not home, you don't realize it now, the heater's on 90 degrees. This will prevent that. This will allow my heater to never go over 76. Also for cooling, I set my temperature. Now typically we always keep our AC to 78 in the summer. 78, maybe we'll go down to 76, but that's typically the lowest we ever go. And because of that, I set my lowest possible temperature to 74 doesn't really need to go lower than that. That is, I mean, for, for my wife especially, that's jacket weather for her. 74 in the house, she's grabbing her jacket. So I love that I can set those ranges. Now I don't have to worry about anybody messing with that because if they do, they it won't allow them to do that. Below that we have hold it duration. When you set up your schedule and it is in a certain mode, say the away mode has certain temperatures. If somebody comes in and adjusts those temperatures or say that you're home and you've got your comfort level set, but you just, you wanna bump up the AC or the heater a little more, you can manually do that. And what this here is saying is how long do you want it to hold that new temperature? For me, I'm saying two hours. So hold it for two hours and then after two hours, go back to my comfort zone because essentially it's a comfort zone. It, it shouldn't be too crazy. So backing out out of all of that stuff, we're looking at the thermostat here. Um, if I want to adjust the temperature. So for example, like I was showing you, let's bring the temperature down to 57. And if we take a look here, it now has that two hours. So it's going to keep it at that new temperature that I set until and that's two hours from now. Now, if I want to, I can just cancel it. It'll go back to the comfort zone that it's in right now, which is the away mode. And now I'm right back on schedule. Now, one last option I wanted to show you guys here, if we back out of all of this, go back to the home screen, right next to home on the very bottom is vacation. So you can set up a vacation pre-programmed into this. So this doesn't necessarily apply um, 
maybe for somebody like me who lives in warmer climates, because for me, I'm just gonna turn my HVAC system off. I, I just don't want it on at all. I don't care what the house is while I'm gone. But for people who are in colder temperatures, say Christmas time, you're gonna be going on vacation, you wanna keep your house and the pipes in it from freezing, so you are gonna want your thermostat set to certain stuff, you can pre-program vacations into here. So you pre-program in ahead of time, you're going to put in the date you're leaving, the date you're returning. Also, you're gonna be putting in there the settings that you want to have, and it'll keep those temperatures for you. And then when you come back at the time that you've specified your return, you can have the thermostat have your house ready for when you return. So that's a cool little feature that this thermostat comes with. So after spending some time with this thermostat, there are a lot of features that I really like about it. I really love that heating and cooling range so that nobody can mess with it more than that. The scheduling with the temperature on and off times as far as like me setting uh, that I want my thermostat to turn on at 7 a.m. and it doesn't do that anymore. Um, it took some getting used to and preferably for me, it's because my heater is so loud that it wakes me up in the morning. So I was almost using that as an alarm. Uh, when I feel that heat blow on me, that immediately wakes me up. So now it's kind of doing that earlier than I expected. So, I mean, I'm waking up a few minutes earlier. That was um, something that just took some getting used to. I wasn't a huge fan of that. The other thing that I was not a big fan of, which I was a little surprised with, was manually adjusting those temperatures. Some of the times when I would tap the button to either scroll up or scroll down that temperature, I either was missing the button or it didn't detect that I was hitting the button. So I had to kind of do it a few times to either go up or down with the button. It, it was, I don't know, it kind of got annoying um, a couple times when I was trying to use it. That never really seemed to get better. I mean, I felt like I was hitting the right sections. So personally, I wasn't a fan of that. Uh, another thing, because this is a touch screen, uh, it, it gets covered in fingerprints. With you scrolling up and down and hitting fingerprints over there, it's got fingerprints all over it. Now that I have it mostly locked in, there's not a ton of fingerprints on it, but when you're walking by and at cert certain angles, it's just, you can see a lot of smudging and stuff like that. Whatever, they're not deal breakers. They're not anything horrible. Um, one other thing that I wish is that the thermostat itself is pretty big. I wish that they could fill up that whole screen. So right now, if you're looking at it, it's just maybe half of the actual screen real estate is the touch screen of this device. I wish that they could take the whole front of this and make that entire thing a nice display. Maybe also if it's that big, have the weather on there and the time on there. I mean, it would be big enough. That is something I would like to see in the future, not a must have. So what do you guys think of this thermostat? Is this something that you would pick up yourself or do you already have one? If so, I'd love to know what you guys have and what you think about them. If you have any questions on this guy, leave it in the comments below. As a reminder, don't forget to subscribe and hit that notification bell for more videos like this one, and I'll see you guys in the next one.